Can you say detox? detox. I believe the church needs one. Um, I, I, I believe even naturally, I think I need one. I think we've been COVID eating. You sometimes need a detox. I remember Sister Audrey put us on these detoxes. She don't, she don't, um, he, he's good. Hey there. <laughs> um, you know, when you go to her about eating right and things like that, the first thing she does is put you on a detox to get all of the old and the gook out. Y'all say y'all quiet already. Okay. Um, yeah. And, 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 and so we're going to talk about this. I want to give you some objectives first, if you can put those on the screen, of what we want to cover um, during this series, the series objectives. If you can work with me today, um, let's roll with them, please. It is, um, this is what we want to kind of get to with this series, understanding our salvation and the New Testament church. Keep rolling with me. What is the meaning or the ministry? What is the ministry of reconciliation? What is the ministry of reconciliation? Come on. Transformation of thought as it relates to Jesus and the Bible. Transformation of thought as it relates to Jesus and the Bible. Transformation means conversion, to change, reconstruction. There is, thank you, sister. Hey, your first time with us today, you filling in for Cam? Y'all give her a hand. I walked in, I said, who is this on my organ over here? I <laughs> Transformation of thought as it relates to Jesus. The next one, please. Um, the next slide, please. Dissecting and examining our understanding of Christianity. I think a lot of what we call or have come to know as Christianity has nothing to do with the personhood of Jesus. A lot of what we call church was never God's intent. Amen. Which is why you see so much up and down and confusion and falling out of church and falling in and so many rededications. People always giving their life back to Jesus. We're going to talk about that. Um, unlearning what we call church. Unlearning what we call church. Church is what you're sitting in um, right now. It's what we call it. It's steeple. It's people. It's seats. It's carpet. It's a platform. It's instruments. It's 20 minutes of worship. It's give some money. It's a sermon. Um, hug, greet, pat. That's what we call church. And you better get down here to it or God's going to get you after a while if you don't come to church. Embracing God's idea his idea, and his plan for his church. I think we know more than we understand, so we've added things to what we call church and Christianity that's, that was never his intent and that is not even in Scripture. And we've passed it down generation to generation. Is there any more? Confronting what we've been taught through the filter of Jesus. Everything should be put through the filter of Jesus. God put himself in Jesus. Jesus was fully God and fully man, and he walked the earth, and he did it for a reason. We should, go back to that slide. We should confront everything we've been taught through the filter of Jesus. Not through your bishop, not through your apostle, not through your pastor, not even through me, through the filter of Jesus. In the book of Acts, they went home and they searched the scripture to make sure what the apostle was teaching was so. And so many people don't even read the Bible, don't even search the scripture. If their apostle said it, that's what it is. If the pastor said it, that's what we're going with. And that's why we're being bamboozled. So confront what we've been taught through the filter of Jesus. Come on, the next one. Mastering agape. Can I, can I help you with this? The whole church, all of us, need to be rebuked regarding this one because we have failed when it comes to how we treat people. 
He says, treat everybody right, especially those in the household of faith. There's more fighting in here than out there. There's more discord in here than out there. So if we can't treat each other right, it's like, it's like people have all this dysfunction in their, their natural families and turmoil in their families. If you can't get along with Uncle Jed, I can't expect you to deal right with the person at your local church. You don't even talk to your mama. You're still mad with your daddy. So how I expect you to come into church and love everybody and embrace everybody and submit to everybody and give to everybody and share with everybody and be the open? No, you, it's not going to happen. That's why it's called mastering agape. I can't do that. Yes, you can. The love of God has been poured in the hearts of the believer by the Holy Ghost. We're making decisions of who we're going to deal with. We've all failed at it. I, I've taught on love. I've taught on forgiveness. I've taught on reconciliation. And there's still some people on my list that I don't fool with. Can we be honest up in here? Everybody got a list. I, I, I love them. I forgave them, but I don't fool with them. If you say you got a list, you a lie. Everybody got a list. I mean, I, I'm, I'm good. I ain't got no problem with them. I just don't fool with them. I ain't eating with them. I ain't calling them. They might not call me, we, we, but we good. I've released them out of my heart. So why you running through the other aisle at the Walmart when you see them in there? You done knocked over a whole end cap. Trying to get away from somebody that didn't even see you at the Walmart. I've been in Walmart and see people running from me. And I follow them. I follow them. Because here's why. Because we don't get to be offended and throw people out. You, Elder Walton don't get to not be anointed no more because I'm mad with her. Now she ain't anointed. Now her breath stinks. She don't like people. I never did like her. Weird, crooked. Because I'm mad with her. But before, she was, she was, she was Mama Walton. And, and, and we have made the gathering as the church the destination. It's never meant to be the destination. The, 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 what we call church is a method. It is the means. The destination was always and will always be transformation. Not coming to church. Now you should gather. I could, I'll walk you through why you should gather. We should, I ain't got to come to church to be saved. Nobody said you did. You ain't got to come to church to be saved, but you don't have to come here to fellowship and grow in your salvation. You can't grow without people. How do you grow in patience if there's nobody to be patient with? How do you grow in love if you isolate it? See, you grow in love when there's folk that you don't want to love that you got to love anyway. I want to punch you in your forehead, but I got to love you. I, I, I got to walk through 1 Corinthians 13 with you. I got to be patient with you and kind and not keep record of your wrong. I got to do all that. That's how I grow. Can't grow by yourself. That's right. Marriage was meant to, um, marriage was meant to help you grow. Because who else you got to be patient with and kind with and don't keep no record of wrong and, 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 and be long-suffering with than your spouse. Not your boo, your spouse. Because the reason you worn out is because you keep giving marriage stuff to your last four boyfriends. That ain't going to work. It done wore you out now. You keep playing house with everybody you meet, now you wore out. I, 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 love ain't for me. No, you just been playing too many games. So I have officially, London and I have officially resigned from the culture we've created that is detached from the culture God intended. We've resigned from that. That is no longer, I'm no longer a part of that. I don't ever want to do what we call church again. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. It's not even in scripture. 
See, we read the book of Acts, and we read through the first chapter about the Holy Ghost, second chapter about the Holy Ghost, and we speak in tongue, and we quicken, and we shah ba 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 and we build doctrines around the Holy Ghost. But keep on reading. They had all things in common, and they shared all things. Come, come on here. Come on here. But it was a mega church. It was not. No, it wasn't. Those are Jesus' meetings. They saw Jesus and they flung to him and he preached to them. Then they went back to their local churches in houses, in small camps. But when he fed the 25,000, that was a mega church. No, it was not. It was a meeting. That's why they said these people are hungry. They got to go back home. And so they stopped and fed them before they went back home to their church. So we got to get back to the context of Scripture and not read stuff and say, well, that's what that means. No, 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 no. Don't just read me verse 13. Start with verse 1 and then go back to chapter 3. Read all the three and four, not talk to me. And make sure whatever you're saying, you can pull three seats to the table to confirm it. Jesus said, Jesus. We must deconstruct our faith. A lot of what we learned about faith in Jesus and church needs to be reviewed, needs to be taken apart, needs to be assessed, needs to be critiqued. Because I believe we are incomplete in what we're doing. In some cases, we're just completely wrong. Wrong. And I believe we need a detox. What is detox? Put it on the screen. Oh, what is detox? Is there a definition up there? Come on, flow with me today. Yeah, I'll read it. It is, it is, you got it? No, you don't have it? I didn't send it to you? Okay. So, you should hear the saints. <laughs> Whenever some, the saints go to pray, oh, shabbataka, ba 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 ba. You know, we, we make everything warfare. You, you get the wall, but ain't no cards. So, the devil's like, ain't no cards. No, 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 no. Either I didn't send it to her, she can't find it, I don't know. But either way, we're going to move on. But the saints are already warring. Ha, ha, ha. Devil ain't going to block this message. Ha, 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 ha. A lot, of, a lot of what we call church is really circus. A lot of clown behavior. A lot of learned behavior. Not bearing any fruit. I'm done with that. Done with it. I'm done, I'm done with slave mentality, church. I'm done with the manip manipulative games in church. It's, none of that is in here. It's not in there. Doesn't happen. It's like when I preach. I preach a message called "A Fresh Approach to Giving." Because I was always taught, if you don't give, God's gonna kill you. If you don't tithe, He's gonna break your washing machine and cause your muffler to fall out. And anything in your life that's bad can be traced back to you not tithing. As if the finished work of Jesus Christ can be undone. Because you didn't give God five dollars. So I preached a message called The Fresh Approach to Giving and took all of that ungodly sting out and I taught that we give because we love God and we trust God. And folks said, you shouldn't teach that. People are going to stop giving. Well, if I keep teaching something that I know is not right, now I'm manipulating you to respond a certain way. And I can't do that. Because this is the Lord's church. And whether you give or not, it's going to be okay. It's been okay for 15 years. We've never been in the red. We never begged for bread or nothing like that because it's the Lord's church. So you can get mad if you want. I ain't giving that. That's okay. I saw somebody said, Pastor, I just wanted to apologize because I had, I had got mad with y'all and I had stopped giving. I said, well, I never knew because I don't check that. I don't know who's, if I checked it, I'd be mad every week. I would look, look at him up there singing and he ain't gay no more. Look at her up there. How you gonna, 
She didn't give her money last week. I don't, I don't check that. That's a, this is Lord's church. When you don't give, you don't hurt me. It's the Lord's church. It was his will, so everything is his bill. He got to take care of it. I didn't start it. He did. I wanted to be the next Fred Hammond. I wanted to have a singing group, Chuck. I wanted to travel the world and sing. Give me a good top player and the drummer and the keyboardist. I was ready to go. Let's keep this thing rolling. But before the foundation of the world, God put what I'm doing now in me. I didn't ask for it. Who asked to be a pastor? Who asked to pastor people? Who asked that? Who asked to be a target? Your family, your marriage, every word you say is critique. They love you one day, hate you the next. Who asked for that? I walked in the service, Pastor Kelly, and come through the back, and lady over there, she says, hey, I said, how you doing? She said, I go here now, it's better over here. What kind of foolishness are we dealing with? Who asked to do that? It's, it's better over here. I said, wow. The honor in society is dead. I said, well, bless you. Well, grace and peace to your sister. Bless your heart. But who, who, who asked for that? So when I'm up here and sharing what I'm sharing, when I share this today, some of y'all going to say, I don't believe that. I ain't going back that no more. Hey, it is what it is. I'm teaching you the gospel of Jesus Christ. We done heard a whole lot of stuff, but it ain't considered the gospel. A detox is to remove a harmful element and its effects. Yeah. Remove a harmful element and its effects. The gospel is not harmful. The way we've taught it, things we've left out, things we've added to it is harmful. You tell people the reason your auntie died because you didn't have no faith. How do you tell somebody that? Because we fake people. You got to have more faith than... We got, we got to dissect this. I had a great friend this week. I was on vacation this week, and they called me. A man of faith, a supernatural man, a brother in the Lord. I love him dearly. And he, and he went to heaven. And we've, we've got this thing of trying to, trying to make up things to say when these things happen. And sometimes it's okay to just shut up. So I pray for you and your family, grace and peace to you all, love you all, and keep on moving. But to try to dissect something, to make sense of some things, it doesn't make any sense. Well, we, well maybe he didn't have no faith, or maybe this, or maybe if he had done that, and maybe he had prayed longer, was he tithing? That's, what, that's it. That's why he died, because he wasn't. We can't do that. But that's what we've done. Try to find a reason. Something you didn't do right that caused God not to see you right and to take you out of here. And we painted God as this ugly guy, this monster with his hand on the trigger waiting to take us out of here and wonder why folks don't want our Jesus. We go to funerals and you, some precious child up here, 16 years old, and everybody takes the platform and says, and God took him. And the mama's sitting here, she's bawling, she's hurting, she's aching. I don't, I don't understand that, but I've heard there's no pain like losing a child. And you couldn't tell her, well, God needed him more. Why did God need her son? Are you kidding me? But that's what we've been taught. And if we don't go back and search the scripture, we just pass it down. That's what you say at funerals. The baby four years old. Well, God needed a flower in his garden. No, it's not, it's not funny at all. So, so, so the God of heaven and earth that created something from nothing needed an extra tulip in heaven, so he took your daughter? We got to revisit some of this, y'all. And then you tell me what a family that hears that 
and have no understanding of Scripture. What do they leave thinking? I don't want nothing to do with that God. He killing our kids and taking our mothers and daughters and stuff. And somebody said, well, just pray. Did you pray all night? I just prayed because I fell asleep. You can't fall asleep. You got to keep praying. Did you fast? I, I fast. Did you fast water only or did you fast everything? Well, I, I ate fruit. You, gotta, you can't eat nothing when you believe in God, honey. And you got all these rules and all this stuff and all these checks you got to do and cross this I and dot that T. And, and, and then when something happens, now what you going to say? You've been given? I, I tithe, but do you give your offering? I ain't getting no, that's what it is. You ain't been given the offering. You got to get your offering with your tithe. You gave to the building fund. You didn't help God build his house. That's why you can't get your house. That's why your loan fell through because you didn't build God's house. And I'm quite frankly just sick of it. And I've been searching the scripture for the last couple of years. And I don't, I don't just grab some, let me go teach this. I've been looking at this and looking at it and reading it. And looking at it. And reading it again. And sitting with the Lord. And sitting with other people that, 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 that have got this revelation. And said, what? now what's up with this? And what does that mean? I got a question here. So is that right? Did he, did he come? Was it three days or four? Because we got we to gotta go through this. And we have been so okay with just having church. I don't even think the believer understands the weightiness of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Because we're too busy with, he got up, he got up, he got up, with all power, all power. And you mean to tell me for 30 years you've been saying he got up and you, and you still down? We missing, we missing something. No, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not making fun. Let me help. Let me put this disclaimer out there. I am in no way um, making fun of what we learned, what we were taught. We were taught by people who knew what they knew, and I don't think it was it was it was wrong. I think it was incomplete. And as you learn more revelation, you got to walk in it and you got to share it. I can't keep holding back the message of giving when I know the better now. No, don't tell them that. They're going to stop giving. So tell them, keep telling them, will a man rob God? And if they do, he's going to kill them. Keep telling them that. And they whole time they're going to be cursed with a curse forever because they didn't get that 10%. I looked at it. I looked at it. I looked at things like communion. You see people in service, I ain't, ain't going to take that. I Because what you're saying, what you're saying is, between last week and this week, I did some things. So I ain't worried of taking communion because if I do, I may die. That's what they told us. Well, here's the deal. If that makes me unworthy, there ain't nobody worthy then. Because you, you, you may have not acted on some stuff, but you done thought some stuff this week. You, 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 didn't, you didn't in your mind call somebody an MF for this week. You didn't did it. Yeah. In your mind, you didn't did it. You didn't look at somebody's breasts. You didn't watch something you weren't supposed to be watching. You didn't, it, it, yeah, it's, so ain't none of us worthy. Pass the bread and cup that don't, I ain't taking it either. Because they, they told us if you take communion and you ain't worthy, you're going to die. And nobody searched scripture and said, well, what does that really mean? Because if that's the case, then I should have died back in 93. I, sh I should have died in, 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 in 96. I, I, I should have died back in 89. Because I'll wash some stuff all night and come to take communion. Break the bread, praise God, and shout. Oh, but the blood. Bah, 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 bah. Are y'all ready? We have spent years trying to get right with God. Working hard for God. It's by grace 
that you are saved not by works. You say it, but you don't believe it. Because we're working hard day and night. Working for the man on them. No, we're working. I, I got I to... I got to serve to fix what I did last week so God can be pleased with me. Our identity in him does not come from our performance for him. We've been living for years with a strong sin conscience, trying to keep the law, attempting to get God to love us more. Can I tell you this? Let me just stop right here. You not going to get God to love you any more than he already loves you. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, he, he demonstrated his love for us. So you, you singing in the choir and you serving over here and you do, ain't going to make him love you no more. But that's what we think. So we think. We, we, even, we even have things like, um, um, you just didn't have a good week. I didn't pray like I should this week. Yeah, I ain't been in no sin, sin, but I didn't pray. I didn't read. So you don't schedule Sunday to us. I ain't going to us because... I didn't read my devotions this week. Y'all quiet up in here. <laughs> We've been attempting to please him so he won't send calamity to our families, which means we see God wrong. And many are still not convinced of what happened for us and to us. What happened for us and to us because of the work of Jesus on the cross, the death of the burial and the resurrection, something happened for us and something happened to us. And if we don't understand that, that means we see ourselves wrong. Yeah. I grew up in Holiness Church. And I never felt adequate enough, even in a Holiness Church, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. And God forbid you messed up. You, I just thought God was going to kill me on the spot, Jack. Like, and bless our forefathers and what they taught us. They gave us great foundation. But now you got to go through some of this because now there's leaks in my building. And I got to go back and dissect some things. and said, now wait a minute. Thank God for this. But they left this part out. They didn't know this part right here. This part was incomplete. They didn't have this revelation. And so we grow from glory to glory, revelation to revelation. And, and, and once you get it, you got to go with it. You can't go back. I said, you can't go back. When I began to study this out, I said, man, I can't go back. And, and, and my, my, my soul, my thinking and my choosing and my feelings wrestled with it like that don't make no sense uh, now I ain't never heard that before but it is in scripture wait a minute this this ain't uh, not that can't be right because I know Jesus paid it all but I got to pay something I got to do something I can't just receive Jesus I got to do something I got to sing, I got to preach, I got to make sure I'm studying all the time. I got to do something to make sure God don't take me out, to make sure he loves me more, to make sure he shows me his favor. And so what happened was this, Jesus, what happened was this. I understood that I was saved by grace, but I never understood that I was reconciled. Let's look at this word reconciliation. Let's look at this. Are y'all ready? In the Hebrew, it means kafar. Write it down. Let's go. I have 13 minutes. I just started. She said, I've been talking. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's kafar. Y'all getting it, though? She didn't mean it in a bad way. She, she getting this word up. I like our people. One of them go to war in the spirit. And they, I, I love it. Kafar. Let's go to the next slide. It means to cover. This is the Old Testament meaning of the word reconciliation. The Old Testament. Write it down. Kafar. To cover. To make atonement. To bring you back to be one with God. To cover with pitch. Cover with atonement. Cover. 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 To make right again. To make right a wrong. 
Kafar. Go to, go to Leviticus chapter number 8. Are y'all ready for this? This, what I want to teach you today is the reason why people don't stay in church, because they don't know this. So if something happens in their life, and they feel condemned, and they figure, I should just stay away, when you should run to the Father when you're in trouble. I see people all the time, and we on purpose don't talk about the church, because I know how you, it's kind of intimidating to run into the pastor and someone be like, hey, you ain't been to church, so I don't do that. But the first thing they say is, hey, pastor, I know I ain't been to church. But I'm going to come. I just kind of been going through and I just kind of, and they start trying to explain themselves. That's their guilt talking. That's shame talking. And we've been teaching shame off of you, but I'm going to show you how to get the shame off of you and keep it off of you. I used to lead worship and, and, and I, I would have some horrible times prior to getting to church or the week before. And I would get there early so I can pray real hard to make sure that the Lord is with me today because I, I ain't been a good guy this week. It's not in Scripture. Because what that caused, first of all, that was me in pride, thinking that I had something I had to do and to accomplish with the people in worship. So let me make sure I'm right. Make sure God forgives me real quick because you ask God to forgive you every day. Real quick, so I go out here and lead the worship so I can do my thing. Not in Scripture. Leviticus 8, chapter 15, verse, and he slew it. He slew the young bull, and Moses took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger and purified the altar. Can you say altar? altar. And poured the blood at the bottom of the what? Altar. Come on, wake up. At the bottom of the what? And sanctified it to make what? Reconciliation upon it. To make kafar, to make atonement, to cover. He poured the blood at the bottom of the what? Altar. What happens at altars? Talk, talk. Stuff die. Stuff die. That's it. Things die at the altar. Things die. Remember that. Things die at the altar. What we do at the altar is we cry. Things should die at the altar. Not just cry at the altar. See, when you just cry, you're not giving what I'm about to teach you. Listen, listen. So he, 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 he purified the altar, poured blood at the bottom of the altar, sanctified it to make a reconciliation up on the altar to make an atonement up on the altar. The altar is a place of death. Go to Daniel chapter 9. It's the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 9. Are you there? Verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. To make what? for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Oh, we're talking about Jesus now in the Old Testament. Daniel's now looking to the cross talking about Jesus. He's going to take care of the sin issue. He's going to make reconciliation for iniquity at the altar. The altar is a place of death. God turned the cross into an altar. And made a reconciliation for all of humanity. Not for Baptist, not for Kojic, not for white, not for black, not for Asian, for everybody, not for Catholics and Presbyterians, for all humanity. For God so loved the world. The world. The whole world. Now go to the New Testament. Look at reconciliation in the Greek. Katalaga. Katalaga, katalage. Say it without spilling your neighbor. Katalaga. <laughs> I went to spit the other day and forgot I had a mask on. Just a terrible thing.
Reconciliation in the Greek is katalage. What does it mean? It means to exchange. Ooh. Different definition, New Testament. To adjustment of a difference. None is in the counting. To make them books right. Make them books balance out. Different definition. Look at this. Look at this. A restoration of favor. We have been working too hard, Sean, to get God to favor us. How many of you got children? How many got children? Raise your hand. How many of your children got to work hard, beg, and plead for you to show them some favor? For you to get them some dinner, get, take care of their basic needs? Raise your hand. I got a hand here. Let them call people on you if you raise your hand. Because, because that's just what you do. Even when you're not happy with them. Even when they got on your nerve. Even we want to push them down the flight of stairs. You still feed them. You pick them up, drop them off. Make sure their clothes are clean. Make sure the stuff fit. Come on here. They ain't got to plead and beg for that. Can I please have a cup of water? Come on, can I have some water? Please, just a cup of water. I ain't got to have no ice, just a cup of water, mom, please. They're like, we're going to get you some water. The water in the house belongs to you. Please, please can, I, can I have a cookie? Can I have a cookie. I saw something in the cupboard. Can I please have a cookie? I, I've been good this week. And I, can I go, go get you a cookie? And some water. Put some ice in it. Because it belongs. That's what we do for our children. Favor just comes with us being their parents. Oh, are y'all still here? Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If I'm going too fast, say slow down. If you don't want to hear no more, I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> I got five minutes, man. And I... <laughs> Second Corinthians five, verse sixteen, it says, "Wherefore henceforth, this is why I'm fool with this King James sometimes. It's just too much. It's right off the bat, wherefore henceforth." That's a whole lot right there. So if you're reading the scripture, you the, the New Living Translation, the CEV Translation, the Passion Translation, but this King James, it'll have you wherefore and there to and you said skip it. So wherefore henceforth, <laughs> know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, Yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. <laughs> and here's what has happened. We read that in church, say, preach, read, read, mother, and don't know what they read, don't have no understanding. And we wait for something to be said that sticks out to us. We put that on Facebook and said, Pastor, show their preach. You heard that one clip. Wherefore henceforth, no, we know man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. She said, what? Verse 17. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to give you a new translation. You're going to go home and read yourself. Therefore, and y'all know this one, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. King James didn't do this justice. It's, it's really, um, the original translation is a new creation. New creation of being. Let me teach this. Old things are... No, I'm just... Listen, that's Ellis. That's my son. He going he gonna to take over if you let him anyway. So. I'm in the back. They, they said, Ellis is here. So, oh, here we come. He said, here he come. Doc, what's up? Good morning, Doc. And you know, before service, I sit in the back and meditate to make sure I'm right. Oh, 
<laughs> Even that, Steve, I don't know where we got that from. You got to sit in the back and be deep before you preach. If you ain't got it by now, you ain't going to have it. You got to sit back there and be quiet and be sanctimonious. Can anybody say nothing and, and, and light a candle and play some soft music? I got to preach the word. People are here to get the word. What, what is all of that? It's, 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 it's a no doing of my own. Sometimes I come here, we've had a bad morning. Sometimes I come here and we ain't got alone that morning. And I preach some of the best messages on those times because it ain't got nothing to do with me anyway. Because I'm human. Can, can y'all accept that, that your past is human? I don't know why y'all think I fly from heaven every Sunday. <laughs> and when they'll save me a spot from a spaceship out back and I come on in here <laughs> preaching and go back up to glory. No. Wow. I got to get up just like you and get dressed. And sometimes I'm up and they ain't up. Get up. Why you ain't up here? Get up. We got to get ready. got to go. And all this is going on before I got to come in and preach to y'all. So give me some grace. Give her some grace. Give my family some grace. That's what we give y'all all the time. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18, verse 18, and all things are of God who had has has. What is that has? What tense is that? Past. Has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry, oh, y'all, of reconciliation. To wit, to wit, to wit. Verse 19, that God was in Christ, God was in Christ. That's deep. God put himself in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses or sins unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now we are, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray in to you in Christ stead, be ye reconciled to God. He's not talking to sinners, he's talking to the church right here. But pastor, you can't reconcile the world back to God because they got a sin problem. You're doggone right we did. We got to deal with the sin problem first. You can't reconcile a holy people to a holy people to a holy God. God couldn't find a human being that was spotless, that had kept the law. So what did he do? He moved into Jesus and counted our sins against Jesus. I know, Reverend, I know I got that part. That's why when I got saved, all of my sins from that point on, he had, you know, he, up to that point when I got saved, he dealt with all those sins. Until I walked the aisle and gave the preacher my hand and got my heart, I was in sin trouble. And when I said I received Jesus, he dealt with them sins at that moment. That's not what we just read. <laughs> that ain't what we just read. If you believe that, that's why you risk the chance of losing your salvation from week to week. So you come back next week, hear a fiery message, then we'll get rededicated. I give my life back to Jesus Christ. Why? Because somewhere between last Sunday and this Sunday, you feel like you lost it. Y'all got quiet on me now. Y'all got quiet on me now. So, who, who, so what is the ministry of reconciliation? It's pointed out in the verses we just read. Number one, God was in Christ. Come on, flow with me. God was in Christ. Write it down. God was in Christ. I'm out of time. Can I finish this point? God was in Christ. God was in Christ. God was in Christ. He could 
not find a spotless human that had kept the law, a sacrificial lamb that can die and, and, and for the sins of the world. So he was in Christ. He moved into Christ. Number one, understand that. Number two, number two, he reconciled the world up to himself, not down. We so concerned about he coming down to us. He brought us up to him. Man. I'm going to show you. He reconciled the world up to himself, up to himself, up to himself. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. Come up higher. Come up. Come up. We're seated with him in heavenly places. Come up. He's been said all along. Come up. Come up. You deserve to be up here. Come up. I preached a message a while back called you deserve to be at the table. Many saints don't believe that. You track your own record, you got your own receipts, you got what you did when you was, before you got saved, and I don't deserve to be at the table. And the truth of the matter is we all flawed and jacked up. And we all deserve death. Because the wages, the cost, the price for sin was death. So he moved into Jesus, reconciled the whole world to himself. Number three, number three, he did not count their sins, sins against them. Their sins against them. Now, what we're reading happened a long time ago. So why do we have the idea that your sins were dealt with when you got saved in the church? Don't worry, on me. Just listen. Stick around for a while. We're going to lay this whole thing out. Number four, it's in what we just read. He gave us his church the job of telling this good news to the world. This is where we've kind of missed it, Elder Floyd. We've been telling folk, God going to kill them. God going to get you. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. That's to this, and that's to that, and why you didn't do this, and you didn't cross that, and you going to hell, and you going behind her. You might go tonight, get yourself together, <laughs> get right with God, stay right. And your head was too short, and your head was too long, and your brow was too tight, and it was too loose, and your breast was too big, and your booty was too flat, and you couldn't wear a hat, you got to wear a hat, you don't wear glasses, you don't wear a lipstick, wear lipstick, and we just got everybody just all confused. And we say, you know what? Skip it. Build your church. Build it. I'm going to go down here. Yeah. Bye. See you later. He gave us his church, not our church, the job of telling this good news to who? We've been telling to each other. A half news to each other. All these conferences and this and that and symposiums and we prophesying. You just everybody just prophesy. You prophesy to me. I'm prophesying you. And you prophesy back to me. I prophesy to you. And you prophesy to me. I prophesy to you. Prophesy back to me. And we, what are we doing? He said, "I gave you a job of telling this good news to the world. What is the good news that he told us to tell to the world? Your sins are not counted against you." What Jesus did was a done deal, not a progressive deal. Y'all quiet on me. It's not a deal over time. I'm going to see how you act, Corey. And if you act good, I'll give you a little bit more favor. You act right, go to church, you're tired, go to work. You know, do what you're supposed to do. I'll help you out. I'll give you a raise on your job. You ain't do right. You, you ain't been in church. You ain't been in a small group. I can't give you no raise. As if God work. It's not a done deal. It's a progressive deal. And over time, he'll get us to a good place. Yeah. When he said it was finished, that's what he meant. Yeah. There's nothing else left for him to do. Amen. Oh, are y'all getting this? Yes, sir. Actually, they would say, are you getting this? Yes, say, are you hearing what this man is telling you? Yes, so although we're saved, Corey, we've been told all the things we must do to please God, to be blessed by God, to be anointed by God, to go to heaven. We've got to do a lot of things in order to get God to do his part. What part does God have to do? 
If he said it was finished, what does he have to do? But that's what happened. We got saved. He said, now, you saved now, right? Okay. That's what you got to do. You got to make sure you read your Bible every day. Make sure you pray at least three times a day. You got to fast sometimes. And, and, and don't, don't smoke, drink, or chew. And don't, hang with and don't hang with people that do smoke, drink, and chew. And make sure all your clothes are loose. And make sure you don't wear red lipstick. Just, just gotta do, make sure you do all these things now. Because then God is going to favor your family. And, and anointing is going to be on you so strong. What he put on you before the foundation of the world, I don't care if you choose to go against God and strip on the pole you're going to be anointed on that pole. No, no, I'm not trying to be funny. If you two, come here. Sean, Sean is an anointed vessel, especially when he wear this ephod he got on this. Come stand here, man. Would y'all agree that he's anointed? I said, would you agree that he's anointed? You can clap. He, he, think he, he didn't ask for this. He was born with it. You can't, you can't go to school for this. This can't be taught. It was in him when he came out the womb. Now, if he chooses to stop leading worship at Lifeline Church and go and sing at Ray's Boom Boom Room, he's going to be just as anointed down there. You, you, you ever heard somebody singing or doing something that had nothing to do with church? And you're like, oh, what? what who? I, I said an anointing. What is? Now, I'm not saying we should all go to Ray's Boom Boom Room. I'm not saying we should strip on poles. That's not what I'm saying. So don't, don't, don't. Listen, let me finish teaching this. Don't take it and run with it. I love this message. Pastor just taught us we can do whatever we want to do because God loves us and we've been reconciled and I've been wanting to strip my whole life. Let me get, that's not what I said. I got the booty for it. I got the breath. Girl, I've been waiting on this gospel. That's not what I said. Not what I said. It's like, it's like people, people tell me, you know, I, London and I don't drink. Well, we don't drink on Sunday. We, we don't, no, we don't drink. I'm just, no, we don't drink. I drank one time. Deacons gave me drink at a bachelor party. The deacons did. They put Cisco, Mad Dog, and what else was that? In a cup, in the McDonald's cup. They were trying to kill me. They were trying to kill me. And, and I drank it and woke up on my apartment doorsteps of Mama House. And I, I don't drink no more. I never drink. I don't drink. But people assume you don't drink because you're some kind of religious fanatic. I just don't drink. So you don't drink? Well, the Bible, and this, I'm not trying to get no debate with you about no Bible. I just don't drink. That's like saying, I don't eat pork. You must be a Muslim. No, I just don't eat pork. So I'm not telling you to go do nothing. So don't, if, if you're waiting on that kind of series to be free to go do what you always wanted to do, then go on and do it. You don't need no scripture for that. Don't put that on me. That's not what I'm teaching. I'm rightly dividing the word that we didn't got wrong for a whole lot of years. And we're sitting up here condemned and hurt and love God. Don't know if he loves us and trying to get sickness off of us. And we, we've made Christianity too hard. And you go to conference and you be there for seven days. Seven days! And leave the same way you came? And we singing about the fire and singing about healing and singing about the spirit, the supernatural. And nothing happens? That was never meant to be. What are we doing? What are we doing? And no offense, but black people like church like that. We like circus church. We like eye candy and tricks and gimmicks. So we got so easily. Just do a dance for us and we good to go. And don't know the scripture. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of talking to people about, I, I, I don't do church anymore because I, I've been waiting for my healing and my mama died and they told me I didn't have enough faith. So sorry to your experience, my brother. Well, let me show you something in scripture. You don't tell nobody no mess like that. 
How arrogant have we become to think we got a lock on the scripture and gonna tell somebody something like that? But that's common in the body of Christ. That's common. It's common. It makes me feel better to be able to give you an answer to what's going on with you. It's like you go to the doctor, they ask you all these questions so they can tell you, um, oh yeah, so you, you, have a, you cough lately, you did this, do this one in your family, uh, you got mice in your house, all these dumb questions. Like, wait, <laughs> like what? <laughs> but it looks like, Mr. Royal, you have mad toe disease. And no, sir, if I hadn't told you my toe was hurting, you wouldn't have told me that. Go to Romans chapter 5 and I'm going to sit down. I always wondered as a, as a youth, we had, I, I love youth. I grew up in youth church. I grew up youth group, you know, camps. And I always wonder why every camp, all the youth get saved again. <laughs> then when I got out of youth church, I was like, the adults do the same thing. Like, open the altar, here they come, crying again. Want to get saved again? You dedicate their life again? Like, what happened between last Sunday and this Sunday that you lost your salvation? What did you do? It's not what you did, it's what you've been taught. As, God, as, as, if, as if what God did on the cross was fragile. And it could be undone. You smoked weed last week and you messed up all of what he did on the cross. Got to come do it again. Oh, you, you ain't got that, that. Stop it. Romans. Jesus. I have a righteous indignation. Righteous. So I, we just can't keep going on this, on this level. How we treat one another. How we judge and condemn one another. For stuff you doing yourself. Stuff you just ain't got caught with. You talking about somebody else. Are you kidding me? Romans 5. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were Listen to what I'm about to read, y'all, dear precious people of the Lord. We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. When did Jesus die? Huh? I ain't talking about Friday or Sunday and it was three days, with two days, or two and a half days. I ain't talking about that. He got, I ain't talking about that. When did he die? Years ago, right? Somebody said 2,000 years ago. Study it out, because we've been saying 2,000 years for 3,000 years. 2,000 years ago, he got up. Stop saying stuff, you don't know what you're saying. No, I said it too. It's staple, 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, on a cross, on a hill. That 2,000 never changed. It should at least be 2,500 by now, son. So he died a long time ago. But it says we were reconciled. We were reconciled. Kind of like that. We were reconciled. We were reconciled to God through his death. Not when we came to the altar. When he died, he reconciled mankind back to himself. It's a done deal. Oh, God. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So, so when he died, he reconciled us. But he had to get up. When he got up, we were saved. Because he lives, I can now face tomorrow. So we come up here and think, when I came to the altar, God did it. He did it a long time ago. We were reconciled when Jesus died. The wages for sin, which was death, had been paid. We were saved when he rose from the dead. But we're reconciled by his death and we're saved by his life. 
and we thought our sins up to that moment we got saved had been, were going to be dealt with. No, no. The, really, the reality is this. None of our sins have ever been counted against us because Jesus died. And the whole room got quiet. It changes how we see God, people. I did not say sin wasn't a big deal because sin will ruin your life. It will unravel your life. I mean, how many of y'all been in sin? And, and, and then seeing the consequences of sin. Okay. So I ain't telling you, sin ain't no big deal. Sin will ruin your air, kill you. But he says, awake to righteousness. What is righteousness? What I'm teaching you right now. The reality of righteousness will cause you not to sin. And the reason we have been sinning is because we've been in the sin camp. Sin Everything has been sin, 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 sin. Don't sin. Stop sinning. Don't sin. Don't. And you're going to sin. It's like telling the kid, don't touch the stone. They're going to touch the stone. We went to eat one time at um, Ruth Chris, and they brought the food out. And the lady says, now these plates are 500 degrees. Don't touch them. We all grown at the table. <laughs> and it's something about when somebody tell you don't do something, When I was coming up, they said, you can't go to no parties. I wanted to go to a party. I want to see what, what is this party about. <laughs> Bun your shirt to the top. Don't show your chest here. I want to show them the chest. <laughs> just, just because, no reason, just y'all said don't do it, I want to do it. They said, the plates are 500 degrees. Don't touch these plates. Um, um, you know, sit them down. And one of the adults said, there's something natural about when you're told not to do something. I got to see for myself. I got to think. He's like. <laughs> he said, hi. I said, they told you not to touch it. <laughs> and there are things, even with this message, just like in Genesis, God says, don't touch. So don't get this mistaken. Oh, we free now? Oh, hey, pass the bottle. Give me the weed. Hey, bring me that man's wife. Hey, that ain't what I'm telling you. <laughs> Sin brings sickness. It brings regret. It brings pain. It brings loss. It separates you from God. But where sin abounds... Grace much more about. And this grace did not come when you sinned. This grace is bigger than a sin coverage. Stop teaching it like that. Grace is Jesus. Jesus is the grace of God. Jesus is what God thinks about us. While we were sinners, he thought of us and said, wait a minute, I got to find a man to fix this. I can't find a man. Let me move into Jesus. Let me send my son to take the penalty and pay the price for what they should be doing. And when you think about that, and somebody has been that good to you, you say, man, I want to serve them. I want to love them. People come and say, I love this church. I love you, Pastor. I don't call y'all mom and pops gimmicky. The teaching you guys have released have changed my life, and I submit to the teaching. I submit to you all, and they want to serve. They want to love the Lord. Nobody's forcing nobody to do nothing here. And he ain't forcing us either. Are, are y'all getting this? I'm, I'm, I'm so out of time. I'm sorry. Um, um, um. <laughs> Said this is grace. And this is what people need to hear when they come into your church and into your presence. That God is not mad with you. He's in love with you. He's died for you. He took care of your sin issue a long time ago. Just come and, and, and receive him and live the life. Into, that's what they need to hear. Now, come on up here and get saved. You, you about to get saved or you're going to go to hell. You're going to hell. And some of us didn't really get saved. It scared the hell out of us. Hell. Fine. I don't want no fine. I'm going down to the altar. (laughs) 
Did, did y'all, are y'all getting this? I got, I, I, I quit. I stop. I stop. I, I don't talk no more. If you receive what I was saying, can you clap at least or something? <laughs>